Es un jodido placer tener a Mickey D aquí en nuestro plató de Rock Palace en esta entrevista que es para nuestro programa de televisión y para rafabasa.com. Vamos a hablar con él de un montón de cosas relacionadas con Motorhead, con el 40 aniversario de la banda, Lemmy Kilmister y el nuevo álbum Bad Magic que se va a poner a la venta de inmediato. ¿Cómo estás, tío? ¿Bien? I'm good, I'm very good. It's good to be here. Uh, we just got here, we just got here, like, 20 okay. minutes ago. Ah, no problem. Uh, la primera pregunta es obligada. ¿Cómo está Lemmy de salud? Yeah, he's doing great, you know. This is the last uh, festival we do in Europe um, for this summer. So we've been doing great. We've been kicking ass all summer, you know. But we are a bit tired now, <laughs> towards the end, but it's the way it should be. Eh, recuerdo una vieja película de los de finales de los 40, murieron con las botas puestas. Lemmy no va a morir jamás, por favor, pero si muera algún día, ¿morirá con sus famosas botas blancas puestas? ¿Tú crees, encima de un escenario? Sí, yeah, creo que lo absolutamente. Es la única manera, ¿sabes? No nunca pensamos en eso, pero creo que es obvio. obvio. ¿Qué pasó realmente en aquella actuación del pasado verano en el festival de Wacken? No, that was two summers ago, right? Two summers. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Last year we did the full show. No, uh, we were uh, we wanted just we we canceled that show. We were not supposed to play, but we wanted to play a few songs. So we said, if we do one song, or we do ten. Uh, You know, so we were just extra, really. I believe we did six or seven songs and then walked off. It was just spontaneous extra deal. Tú sabes que la vida del rockero es muy dura, es muy larga, pero en el caso de Lemmy, ¿piensas que hubo un momento que peligró el futuro de Motorhead? Well, not, not really, because we're close to Lem and, you know, it's, we have our ups and downs, you know, but as long as... No, we've been doing fine, you know. Uh, personally, I, I'd like us to slow down a little bit. That would have been nice. We need some more space between the continents. Uh, and that's not because of the health. That's more up here, you know. Uh, me, personally, I like to have some more time between the continents so I can recharge. Uh, but no, no, Motorhead is coming back. We're like a fucking nightmare, you know. We never go away. <laughs> Vamos a hablar del nuevo disco, eh, Bad Magic. Eh, yes. A mí me parece un disco 100% Motorhead. Tiene ese sonido característico de la banda. Me parece un cañonazo de disco. Gran, gran disco. ¿Qué tienes que decir tú, Mickey, de Bad Magic? Well, it's. Uh, to me, it's too early to kind of have a huge idea of what, where this album ends up. Because people want to ask us. Is this the best you ever done? Uh, where do you class this? Is this a top five? I don't know. It'll, it'll be a couple of years until I know that. But I know we've done a great album. And uh, generally, since Inferno till now with Cameron Webb, I believe this chunk of albums represents uh, a certain time for Motorhead, obviously. Uh, but it took us to another level. Together with Cameron, we we done. I think every record he's done is is really really good. You know, this album I know is very very fast. Every song is very fast. Uh, I played it the other day and I was pretty surprised um, that every song is really up tempo. You know? Really a fist in your face. But I believe it's a good album. We would never have released it unless we thought it was a good album. So, but where it is, I don't know. Eh, Miki, vamos a hablar de las primeras canciones del disco. A mí particularmente me ha encantado Victory or Die. ¿Qué me puedes contar de las dos primeras, o de las cuatro primeras, o de las que quieras? Well, this... Um, yeah, what can I say about the songs? Uh, we do the same thing every time we go in the studio. We try to write the best material we can, you know, and... Uh, The only thing I can tell you this time is that we maybe we played this album more together as a band. Uh, so of course it, it creates a different vibe, I suppose, you know. And, and uh, we played it more live in, in the in the studio. 
but overall, I mean, the songs we write, some of the riffs and some of the songs we didn't like, we threw them out. Other ones we kept, you know, the ones you hear. But um, I don't know what to tell you more about it, more than when we wrote a song, we liked it, we record it, and then we move on. It's very spontaneous writing that we do. We've done every album this way, and this one's probably a world record in being spontaneous and quick, you know. But it seems to work for us, and uh, so why not? ¿Qué me dices de la versión eh, que habéis hecho de los Rolling Stones de Simpatía por el Diablo? ¿Por qué esta versión? Eh, eh, ¿Cómo surgió? A mí me encanta cómo canta Lemmy, cómo, cómo emula, entre comillas, a, a Keith Richards y a Mick Jagger. Eh, ¿Cómo es esa versión y por qué eh, Simpatía por el Diablo del Rolling Stones? Well, we were told uh, to, if we wanted to make a song for Triple H, you know, the wrestler, uh -huh. he wanted to use this song for, uh, I believe, a documentary or something. I don't know, but, and we recorded, and then we liked it so much that we said, this should go on our album. And uh, here it is, you know. We wanted to make a Motorhead version of it. You can still hear it's Rolling Stones, but uh, I believe we put a, a good stamp into it, you know. Y de la colaboración de Brian May, de Queen, and the Devil. That, uh, that I will give Phil the credit for, because we do talk to Brian all the time. And as you know, he was on stage with us for Bone Checker. Uh, he likes the band, he loves the band. We like him and them, you know, and Phil keeps contact with him. So uh, I believe he just called Brian and said, you want to do solo on the album? And Brian said, yeah, fuck yeah, let's do it. Vamos a ir terminando. Hay una gira 40 aniversario de la banda. Eh, arranca el 15 de noviembre en París. Eh, ¿Sabes si la gira va a pasar por España? No, no, not 30, 40. Noviembre. 40 year anniversary. Ah, for, ah 40 aniversario. Hey. Yeah. 30, that was 10 years ago. <laughs> yes, I believe we're going to do some Spanish shows. Uh, the tour will kick off, I believe, in France uh, in the fall, and we do the 40th anniversary tour. It's going to be in two lots, so we're going to do um, half of Europe in November, December, and then a half from February into March, I believe. And I believe there's some Spanish shows too. ¿Y qué nos puedes adelantar del tour 40 aniversario? ¿Cómo va a ser el set list, el montaje, el escenario? Va a ser muy, muy especial, ¿verdad? Well, Aquí? we don't know yet. We, we're working on it as we speak, you know. We got to find some good songs. Um, yeah, we got to do some special stuff for it. I I don't know exactly what we're going to be doing. And I wouldn't tell you anyway that it would be a surprise. But uh, it'll be a little special, yes. Muy bien, Miki, es un placer tenerte aquí. Muchísimas gracias. Eh, por favor, dile algo al público español. Hi, boys and girls. Mickey D here. The rest of the boys are in there, in the sleeping. Now, they're getting ready for the big show here. It's good to be back here. Uh, it's been a few years since we actually played in this area of Spain. So we're looking forward to it. Hopefully it's not going to rain because we're going to kick some fucking ass up there tonight. So see you there if you're missing it. Your fucking problem. We'll see you next time. Ciao.